Wow, this water's cold. Um, my name is Roy Chung, and I'm a fifth-year undergraduate studying mathematics at UCI. Um, and I became a Christian two years ago. This is my testimony. Oh, sorry, before I start, I've had a really bad cough for the last two weeks. If you guys will excuse me, show me some grace. <clears throat> okay. When I was in the second grade, my mom discovered a church in Roland Heights that she took a liking to. Good Shepherd Presbyterian Church would soon become a place I would call home for many years. However, two decades would pass before I would personally commit my life to Jesus. It was in late junior high ministry that I began to be critical of the discernible hypocrisy of my self-professing Christian friends. My fellow praise team members were eager gossips, and others spoke with unbridled profanity and crude humor. Furthermore, I felt an increasing sense of isolation from my church peers. <laughs> Whereas most church friends had a cool texting phone, such as the Voyager or Blackberry, <laughs> I had a dinky potato of a flip phone. Whereas they were tall and hit the five feet club early on, I was a four foot stubby garden gnome. Whereas my trendy peers wore skinny jeans and van shoes, I stayed fiercely loyal to the philosophy of baggy jeans and tacky running shoes, even earning me the affectionate nickname, Costco Shoes. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> I was awkward, <clears throat> socially clumsy, and fashionably incompetent. Eventually, I grew to despise my own social inhibitions and to loathe the rampant cliquishness that pervaded the church. The resulting long-term ramifications were twofold. First, this initiated a yearning desire to be deeply known and loved by others. Second, this served as a catalyst that insidiously bred my cynicism towards the church. To my shame, I slowly began developing anger issues and dabbling in pornography to escape my depressive phases. In high school, intermittent seasons of absence from church would follow as the seeds of cynicism sown during middle school began to sprout as explicit doubt. Scandals of fellow friends doing drugs at church retreats, Christians that seemed to possess blind faith of the highest order, both these groups vexed me. I loved my church friends, but I scoffed at their laughable profession of faith. In arrogance, I would also barrage my Bible study teachers with vapid philosophizing demands to prove Christianity's truth to me. I relished stumping my older peers into faith. It was no surprise that in this season of growing apostasy, my sin life was propagating behind closed doors. By now, my addiction to pornography had become so perverse that I simply could not get a good night's sleep without it. I would defile my eyes with sexually explicit videos, the final images seared into my mind before sleep, all while my unaware brother in the neighboring room labored studiously for exams. All while my loving mother prepared the next day's school lunches. <clears throat> my relationship with my mother would also deteriorate as my poor academic work ethic reflected in my dwindling grades. I recall moments where she would weep in anguished disappointment, to which I would respond by glaring at her with piercing coldness. During heated arguments, I would violently strike inanimate objects as if to accentuate my talking points, denting the fridge with my fist, creating a hole in the wall, and smashing random household appliances. To this day, I have a graveyard in my room consisting of defunct stacks of broken laptops and cell phones. My relationship with my father was no better. <laughs> As I loathed his withdrawn, socially reclusive nature, I bitterly blamed him for my own social anxiety. In one scathing argument, I let the floodgates of hatred loose, condemning him as a failed parent who deprived my childhood of a proper father figure. 
Finally, even my relationship with my beloved younger brother would take a toll as I would challenge him on the untenable grounds for his faith. I loved my little brother dearly, but I simply could not understand his blind subservience and unquestioning loyalty to Jesus. It would be years later, in my junior year of college, that a fellow high school friend named Timothy Fang would invite me to a bonfire event hosted by his campus ministry. Thanks, Tim. Love you, man. <clears throat> Though I was reeling from a poor experience in a previous Christian fellowship, I swallowed my social anxiety and took the chance to attend anyways. By God's grace, I kindled an unlikely friendship with an older, buff, hug-loving white dude who would later pursue seminary. <laughs> and if that weren't obvious enough, that was Matt DeFuria. <laughs> Thus began several months of meetups at the local Chick-fil-A, where this brother challenged my own challenges towards Christianity. He began to slowly disassemble my intellectual barriers, building a historical and rational case for Christianity's truth. With love and grace, he patiently dismantled my empty sophistry. Most significantly, he devised Bible-based strategies to combat sins that I'd long submitted myself to as a slave. Through his outpouring of love through paying for my meals, patiently lending an ear to listen to my burdens. <laughs> Thrashing me at Super Smash Bros. Melee. <laughs> and even gifting me a personalized Bible. <laughs> He's a killer peach main in Melee. <clears throat> <laughs> My long frozen heart began to finally thaw. I began to earnestly comb the depths of the Bible, something I'd never done of my own volition growing up in the church. I began to attend the local Crosslight Bible Church, congregating with other loving Christians who graciously took me in. Despite my late introduction into the family, I witnessed PJ's sermons firsthand, and wow, this man could preach. Slowly but surely, the message of the gospel that had previously fallen on deaf ears began to ring true. The profundity of the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ had died on the cross for my sins, finally hit me as the stunning reality that it was. My realization that it was my sins that had ultimately nailed him to the cross, that, that my continuance in sin was a direct spit to his sacrifice, it broke me. Jesus had willingly given himself up for me, a contemptible sin junkie. It was through having faith in Jesus' perfect life, atoning death and resurrection, that God counted me as righteous, not as a result of my, any inherent goodness within me. It was because it was by Jesus' loving sacrifice that I was saved from the eternal damnation that I deserved for a rebellion against a just and holy God. Upon surrendering my life to Christ, I began to find victory in areas of sin that had long dominated my life. My callous judgment of other professing Christians subsided as I recognized my own conspicuous hypocrisy and familiarized myself with the concept of grace. My hatred for pornography and its perversion of God's creation ordinance increased tenfold as it was utterly extricated from my life. My Korean rage became just normal rage. <laughs> and eventually reduced to mere blips of forgetful impatience. My need for self-worth affirmations and the approval of man began to take a backseat as I grew in the understanding that Christ loved me despite all my flaws and imperfections. Friendships that I had long since left to be discarded were rekindled or reconciled. <clears throat> Chris, um, thank you for being here today. My family underwent an unprecedented emotional healing as I learned to serve and genuinely love them. Truly, the gospel knows no bounds to the transformation of the heart. Okay. My current roommate and beloved friend, William James Agnew V. <laughs> That's his real name. <laughs> It's wild. 
expressed a poignant offhand sentiment that stuck with me. Roy, sometimes I wish I'd known the gospel sooner. That much I know to be true in my case. To my little brother, Percy. rotten brother. <laughs> I shudder to think of a timeline where you'd cease to pray fervently for my salvation. I am deeply indebted to the years of love and grace you showed your foolish older brother as he fumbled around in darkness. <laughs> Friends, if you are a Christian who has hit a spiritual low, or a skeptic who doubts the claims I've put forth regarding Jesus, I invite you to explore the truth of Christianity. Christianity is not moralism or a self-help religion. I did not become a Christian to become a nicer person. I could have pursued Zen Buddhism or any other philosophy or religion if that were my intention. At the heart of Christianity is the extraordinary claim of a literal, physical re resurrection of a redeeming savior. Once investigated, the historical and emotional truth of Jesus' literal life, death, and resurrection will shake you to the core. And Jesus is worth it. Thank you very much.